I was just thinking today about how the the global shipping industry is starting to move towards electric electric boats, particularly really big ones, electric ferries that you would think wouldn't be electrified because they're so large. Actually, it's beginning to happen. And before I did this video, I saw some news saying that two more large, super large electric ferries have been ordered from an Australian company and it's starting to take over. But then today, only a matter of 12 hours later, this news has emerged from China showing that actually the shipping industry is going electric. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. On the 23rd of July, The Driven said that there is a turning point for shipping. INCAT are now building two battery electric ferries for Denmark. These electric ferries, they're not small. I mean, when you think of a ferry, you might think of something relatively small. These are absolutely enormous. Australian shipbuilder INCAT Tasmania says it's been selected to design and build two new battery electric ferries for Danish ferry operator Mols Lingen. So it appears as though these ferries are massive, 130 meters in length, and powered by 45,000 kilowatt hour batteries. 45,000 kilowatt hours, that's enormous. Now apparently, they're part of a new class of high speed, low emission ships, or basically zero emission ships, that are redefining what's possible at sea. And this is changing the shipping industry. It's being disrupted. And not just this, because it's happening in China as well. Today, it was announced that China's first pure electric tourist vessel has it well, was just been built. It has 3,918 kilowatt hours of batteries. So a much smaller batteries, much, much, much smaller battery packs than the ferries being built by the Australian company for this Norwegian ferry, ferry fleet. But still, it shows you that this change is happening not just in Europe, but also in China. In addition to electric vehicles and electric aircraft, Apparently, CATL, the biggest battery company in the world, are expanding the use of batteries into more areas. On the 25th of July, China's first pure electric tourist passenger ship, the Yuzhian 77, co-developed with CATL, officially set sail in Xiaomen Bay, the battery giant said on Friday. The ship is equipped with Cadel's marine battery system, and its operation validates the feasibility of pure electric technology in nearshore waters, says seen at post while providing passengers with zero emission, low noise, and high quality maritime travel experience, the company said. Now, seen at post, they're a great website, but I've got to call them up on this because this does not validate the idea of electric ferries. They've been around for years now, and um, several of them have already been built and been in operation for quite a long time. However, this marks the acceleration of the green transformation across the world, and particularly in the shipping industry in China said CATL, and I totally think that's correct. CATL's marine battery system uses cell-to-pack technology, so basically like a structural battery pack, and an integrated CCS combined charging system with a battery pack energy density that's pretty good of 140 watt hours per kilogram. It uses lithium ion phosphate batteries, so the batteries are cheaper, of course, than ternary batteries as well. The system provides the Yuzhian 77 with a battery capacity of 4,000 or 3,918 kilowatt hours and a range of 100 kilometers. And the battery pack actually uses NP, which is no propagation technology, meaning thermal runaway is prevented from spreading at the cell level. In other words, if one particular battery cell caught fire somehow, there is the ability to just shut off that cell and prevent that fire from catching on and basically having the entire battery go up into flames. So even though there's the perception that the shipping industry is now banning, some, some of the shipping industry is banning carrying electric cars, carrying plug-in hybrids, e-revs. They're saying, we're not gonna ship them anymore. Some of the major shipping companies. They're saying that um, the reason is just it's too dangerous. They're, these cars are setting themselves on fire. But actually the truth is that batteries are safer than internal combustion. If you look at the number of EV fires compared to the number of internal combustion engine fires on a percentage basis, EVs are much, 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 much less likely to catch fire. Plug-in hybrids are much more likely to catch fire than internal combustion cars. And fortunately, that's where these ferries are going to be safe, so much safer because they're not plug-in hybrids. They're simply purely electric. This ship 
in China is 49 meters long. It is 14.5 meters wide, can carry 360 passengers, and has a maximum speed of 20 kilometers per hour. So it's relatively fast and can carry quite a lot of people. It has an IP68 protection rating and can withstand up to 1,300 hours of salt spray testing according to CATL. So that's where you basically get a high pressure spray gun and spray salt at the, uh, the battery and it, it works fine after that. So IP68 means it's extremely good and you're not gonna get any salt ingress into the battery. Cable's marine battery system has obtained certification from major global classification, classification societies, including Bureau Veritas, American Bureau of Shipping, and the DNV in Norway, saying that these ships and batteries are safe. The Yuzhian 77 will reduce fuel consumption by 250 tonnes annually, with carbon dioxide emissions reduced by over 400 tonnes, equivalent to the carbon sequestration capacity of planting more than 20,000 trees, said Cadel. That's just one ferry. Imagine when the shipping industry is, say, 50% electric. We're talking, that's the equivalent of millions of trees. Cadel is the world's largest manufacturer of batteries. So the fact that they are focusing on making batteries, particularly for the shipping industry, this is a big opportunity. And it shows you that Really, these big companies, if they get on board and they commercialize the product, it pushes it into the realm of disruption. This disruption, this pivot point is going to happen soon where ferries will be electric in the future and that's what companies will build. They won't want anything else. They won't want to, they want to go, won't, won't going to have to use uh, fuel to fill up their ferry when that fuel is so much more expensive and dirtier. And also electric ferries are going to be safer and quicker quieter there's so many benefits let me know your thoughts in the comments do you agree do you disagree thanks for watching seven major chinese automakers sold between 35 to 100 percent more cars in 2024 than they did in 2023 the global automotive industry did not get bigger so that means only one thing that Chinese car makers took massive market share from their rivals outside of China. Chinese electric car sales have just come in, my friends, and they are, well, pretty damn staggering. As a result of these record EV sales from Chinese car companies, China actually sold 42% of the world's cars in November. In December, that number was probably even higher. BYD, Zika, Xpeng, Neo, Leap Motor, all of them, Xiaomi, all of them broke car sales records for their companies. Here are the numbers and here's what it actually means. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you too. And guys, if you're charging your EV uh, using electricity from the grid, I suggest not doing that because solar systems on average give you a payback around 50,000 US dollars in America and it's around 70,000 Australian dollars here in Australia. So it's a no-brainer. I use a solar system installed from Resync Solar. I'll put a link in the description below. By the way, I don't get any profit out of getting you guys to buy a system from them. I just recommend them because I use them and they were great. BYD has now sold oh, just under 4.3 million cars this year, just under 4.3 million, which is insane considering four years ago, they sold 400,000. <laughs> That's crazy numbers, right? 